So welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk about using the web for music production and live performance. And as you already said, I'm Jan. I'm the Deftone on Twitter, and that might be important later. Um, I'm a front-end developer from Berlin. Uh, I'm not, I don't have a musical background, but I'm very passionate for music. I keep saying that, but actually it's wrong. Uh, in 2004, I had this band. Well, we had this website, and we didn't have songs. But we were geeks, and we know how to make websites, and we wanted to have an awesome website. We had like an awesome table layout going on here, and uh, we had the best name, the Hybrid Monkeys. Apparently, we didn't know what PNG Alpha was, if you look at the colors here. Well, so yeah, that's, the, that's my musical background. Not, not really fancy. Um, but audio on the web also has like a dark history. Uh, if you look, at, for example, at BG Sound, who, who here knows the background sound? Yeah. We've all been there, done that. Uh, like, you could use it for MIDI in the background of your page. Wow. Um, then you had the possibility to do, like, uh, to use Flash or Java to, to replay songs on your um, website. But it's not, it doesn't really feel nice because it's not the web technology. Like, it's all uh, just Java and Flash. And then finally, we had the audio tag. And it all was amazing because we could stream audio. We, uh, could analyze audio, and um, everything was good. Until the point where we wanted to do more than just listening to music, because uh, we also want to um, like create filters, uh, create music. And so people from Mozilla came up with the Audio Data API, uh, which, was, which allowed you to create music, but uh, in a not really nice way, and the spec had some flaws. So uh, Chris Rogers from Google came up with the Web Audio API, and uh, that's where we are right now. It's an awesome API. And when I looked at this, uh, it kind of looked like the history of layouting on the web as well, because in the beginning we had frames, which is like background sound. Nobody uses it anymore. I hope. I hope. And then uh, we advanced to table layout, to object embed. So we know table layouts work, so does object. But it's not really the nicest thing to use. So then we advanced to float layouts. So everything was nice. But you still had to use some hacks, uh, like um, clear fixes. Um, and then we had the audio data API, and we had Flexbox version 1, which we then dropped. And uh, we had Flexbox. So that's the history of audio on the web. And so there are Web Audio API basically gives you a low-level access to all things audio. You can um, create sounds from scratch. Uh, you can manip manipulate sounds with filters. Um, you can time sounds precisely. You don't have to use set timeout or any of that. It is very precise. And tons of other cool stuff that I will not mention, like spatial audio, like you have like, for 3D games, if you need like, an audio source coming from that direction with that intensity, it's right built in. You can just use it. Um, so there are many demos with the Web Audio API, but I kind of wanted to make like a, a real software with the Web Audio API. And I was still in uni, and so I had a nice professor, and he let me come up with a nice title for a thesis. It's building a collaborative music production environment using emerging web standards, which basically means what I wanted to do was to create um, a music production software that runs in your browser. And it says collaborative. So because I wanted to make it collaborative, because we're on the web, so we could use web technology to make like bands uh, interact uh, if they work remotely. And the first thing I did was, uh, because I was in academia, I had to analyze things first. Um, I had to look at the audio editors out there, like, because they have years of development and best practices. Um, they have common interface patterns. Um, I wanted to get like a minimum feature set, because I had six months of time, and I needed to find, like, what do I need to do to make people use it? Um, and so I looked at, for example, GarageBand. You have, like, uh, you have the controls over here. You have, like, tracks. You have previews of the, of the songs. It looks kind of easy to use. And then if you look at Ableton, which is a more professional software, you can see the same pattern here. You have, like, some controls over here. You have the tracks also here and some previews. And the same image is in all the others as well, like in Reason. Um, so 
analyzing all the editors. You have a timeline left to right. Uh, you have previews, and depending on content, they're different. If you have drums, it's not a, a waveform, or if you have like a recording, it's a waveform. Uh, you have tracks as rows, and what you need is a way to record stuff. And you need to be able to import stuff. So that's two of the basic features. Also, you need like a drum machine so people can uh, come up with awesome songs. And you need a synthesizer for nice melodies. So that's what I needed to do. And this is how it looks like in the end. So you can see the pattern here. You have like the controls, you have the tracks, you have the previews. This is a synthesizer, this is a drum track. But as I said before, um, uh, that's one more thing because all the other editors were missing collaboration, and this editor has collaboration built in, and this is what I want to demo now. Uh, okay, no, before I want to talk about why do we need this, uh, why do we need collaboration? It's awesome for remote band brainstorming. Imagine you're like in a band with a guy from London and in Berlin, and you could just jam. And uh, you, you want to have autosave and auto backup, which is a big problem as well. Uh, but there's one problem. Uh, it's sadly not offline, the syncing. And I'm sorry, Team Hoodie. <laughs> well, offline first. So demo time. Uh, let's show this. So I will just go into the editor really quickly. Uh, open this one. Open the communication panel. Oh, hey guys. So I want to introduce you to um, my brother. <laughs> um, my brother, hey Niels, say hi. hi. I hope you can hear me. Do something. Yeah, it's good. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> um, Nils is right now in my hometown uh, in the west of Germany. And then you have uh, Will, my flatmate from Berlin. Hi, Will, how are you doing? Say something. Oh, yeah, you can't say it. Wait. Do something. Ah, so beautiful. So, um, <laughs> normally you could see my face here. I don't know why it's not working, but. Are you guys ready to jam on something? You can't hear the voices because they have their instruments plugged in and you will only hear the instruments. So whatever they say. Yeah, go for it, guys. Go for it. Awesome. we see you later. So because uh, I will not show you how they jam, this might take some time. Uh, I want to show you the editor. And um, I want to show you that it's really working. So I have the editor here. I have a synthesizer track. Uh, I have a drum track. And I have an audio track. Um, so a synthesizer, if I double click here, I can edit the synthesizer notes. Uh, I can make them longer, um, whatever. Um, you have a lot of settings for the synthesizer here. Like you can, a synthesizer is made up of oscillators that create the sound. And you can define the types of oscillators. You have a lot of settings here. And I will try to play something. It's not really awesome. But just so you have an idea of how this sounds like. some filters that um, change the, the sound. And you have like a, an oscillator, which is not playing any uh, at the moment. Yeah, so this is um, the built-in synthesizer. And then we have the, the drum machine. If you double click here, you can edit the drum machine here. And you can see the previews updating here and here. And you can just, I don't know, let's, let's just play the drums. Um, this is, um, the interface is timed with set timeout and set interval. And, oh, is it too loud? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, perfect. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but the sound is timed in the Web Audio API because if you have a drummer that is timed with a set timeout, your band is going to go nowhere because it will be all the time. It will be like 10 milliseconds off and then it adds up to the end and then it will just be horrible. So you can do that in the editor, for example. And you can have like different patterns like this one. 
That's cool. And you can also just uh, play audio, or you can record stuff. This is what I'm going now. Uh, this is done with Get User Media. So I need to allow the um, microphone input. Perfect, it's working. So you can see uh, there's a signal coming. And just, just, I will just kind of say, hello, JSConf. And then I can upload the recording. Uh, I have it then here in the file browser. I will drag it in. And I can arrange it a bit. And then I can just, so the play button, I soloed this one because it doesn't really work together. Uh, the play button will then trigger the global playback, and it might sound something like this. Hello, JSCon. <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> OK. But this is not showing the uh, collaboration feature. So the collo collaboration works like this. Whoa, look. So I have another instance uh, here, open here, and I can just uh, add a new track. The layout is kind of broken now, and I edit it here, and it's immediately it's here over here, and I can edit here, and it will show up here. So it's like, hello, JS Conf, and then it's there. Everything I do is synced in real time using the differ differential synchronization algorithm. If you want to know more about it, just ping me afterwards. It's kind of complicated, and so everything will sync all the time. And so that is what uh, my friends, or like my, my flatmate and my brother are doing right now. And uh, we can just go back and check how far they are. I hope something that it worked. Well, no. <laughs> uh, let me just talk to them. <laughs> so my brother's gone. <laughs> So it's not working. Oh, we can't hear him. Yeah. Oh, oh he's gone as well. Well, let's see. Let's see if they've recorded something. Oh, that's cool. So we obviously we agreed on a song that they're gonna make, and I will just now do what they would have. Oh no, something's happening. Something's. I wanna. Okay. Okay. So this is Will now editing the stuff. Um, Faster will. Perfect. That's easy. Um, so uh, this will be the guitar, I guess, uh, because I know. Um, I will turn it up a bit, and then I will turn the drums down a bit, and then just move it a bit here. Let's see if that works. So maybe you remember the song. Awesome, awesome. They just made that. <laughs> Let's say bye. It kind of worked. Awesome, awesome. See you, see you later. You, you, you have a beer for free at the party. Oh, my brother's coming back. Too late. Perfect. So. <laughs> OK. So that worked. Very well. So that was uh, the end result of my thesis. And I think you can already kind of use it. Um, but I also want to talk about live music performance and how can you do live music performance in the Web Audio API. You can, for example, use your instrument like a guitar, plug it in, use the API for amplification and for effects. Uh, we've seen that yesterday. Stuart Memo did it in the introduction. On top of that, Jan Krutisch did the live, he live coded the background uh, track uh, with, a, with his tool Live Coder. But I want to focus on uh, using MIDI devices to control your application. So uh, to, for example, control my editor. Um, and I want to introduce you to the band The Glitch Mob, um, which is one of my most favorite bands. Everything that you see right there is they are an electronic, ba electronic music band, and they do songs only with MIDI devices. Even the drums that you can see right now is MIDI. And um, it kind of sounds like this. So 
so you can hear like you have some drum parts, you have some uh, vocals that are being uh, invoked by a sampler. And I thought, I, I want to do that as well. Um, so their setup looks like this. You have the three guys, uh, they have their drums, and they talk MIDI to your software. So the problem is, neither do I have um, three uh, people capable of doing that, including me, uh, nor do I have the MIDI instruments, and nor do I have the software. Well, turns out, you can do that on your own as well. So this is uh, one of my most favorite DJs from Japan. His name is Broken Haze. Um, he is demoing something on his iPad, and you can see it's only him performing. And um, that inspired me a lot. It sounds something like this. Um, Broken Haze, new album, Live Error. And he's doing that alone on stage with drums and his iPads, and it's just amazing. So I thought, if he can do that alone, maybe I can do that. And what I needed for that is the Web MIDI API, which is really new. And again, if we talk about MIDI, it's not shitty MIDI background stuff. Uh, it's the protocol for digital instruments that send data to your application. Uh, but the MIDI API is in an early stage. You have to set flags and I think it only works in Chrome right now, Firefox people. Um, but the awesome thing is, uh, oh no, you've seen nothing. Um, the awesome thing is uh, the Web Media API is uh, developed in Japan. And if you know the Japanese culture, they're kind of freaky, and I love that. So they really love the Web Media API, and they do tons of shit with it. And they even came up with a mascot. It's called MIDI uh, It has two MIDI outputs here, and it has keys here, and it's all over the world <laughs> in the web. That's not enough, so they made an animation. Hi, uh, MIDI Hi, Hiya. Well, so enough about that. <laughs> so I thought, I, I need to use this. And um, so let's talk about JS live performances. Last year, uh, I did a live performance at uh, Reject.js. Uh, I was using the Game Controller API, and that was kind of cool as well. And then, if you've been to this year's Reject.js, you might have seen the, like, the world premiere of the semicolons. If not, you have to check out the video later. Uh, it, they were using, or oh, I'm part of the band. Um, <laughs> we were using the Web Audio API as well. And Obviously, you've seen the introduction yesterday, and that was all done in Web Audio, and it was amazing. And I hope that you are ready for another demo that I will do right now, and I need to plug in my iPad. Just bear with me a bit. Oh, and I need to put this on. Uh, es kommt nichts. Ah, here we go. So I hope this works. Uh, enjoy this. I hope I'm not su I'm being sued afterwards.
uh, that was basically it, but wait. Oh no. Well, yeah, yeah. So, sorry, sorry. So, um, thanks. Uh, <laughs> if you want to check out the semicolons, uh, go to the slides. Uh, if you want to check out my brother's band, check, uh, check out the link in the slides. And please check out the Glitch Mob and Broken Ace. They inspired me a lot to do this. Thank you.